so when that scroll is handed to the one who, the only one who, who's the only one who's worthy? Jesus. 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 He, they looked, remember, they looked all around the earth. They looked under the earth. They looked in the heavenlies. They looked under the earth. They said, who, there is no one worthy except the one who looks like this lamb. That's chapter 5. The lamb who takes the scroll. And so we know he is worthy. He will assume his place. We say, take your place tonight, yeah. Lord, in our hearts and on your throne, and we give you glory. So the scroll represents the title deed, just as Bill just said. You, Bill, you gave a great summation because that is exactly right. Um, the action plan required to judge, cleanse, and rule the earth while bringing the church in unity with redeemed yes. Israel yes. to fulfill or to fullness so that the Father's purpose for the earth may come to pass. The strong angel asked, who is worthy? What human is worthy to open the scroll and to loose the seals? What man is powerful enough? What man is deserving enough, smart enough to be able to take the scroll and administrate the end time judgments? I want you to think about it. No one knows the entire picture but Jesus. He is the only one. You might think, well, my life is so simple and he doesn't see what's... Listen, he sees everything and he's not missing one thing out of your life. You are precious to him. You, he is, he is, um, he is planning and doing everything for your good. Just like that scripture says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Uh, plans to Oh my goodness, right. prosper you, you and not harm you, plans to give you, I can't read the cursive, oh. hope and a future, and I should know that by heart. Anyway, that, that's from Jeremiah 33 or 31, 39, what is it, 29, 11, 29, 11, that's right, praise the Lord, so he is the only one who's worthy, he is the only one, and remember he wanted to be called the son of man. He was called the Son of Man more times than he was called. He called himself the Son of God. Right. He loved right. being called the Son of Man. Isn't that interesting? It's because he loves man. He loves who he created. He loves this earth. He loves everything about it. He says, this is my creation. I love this place, and I want to be here. And it says in Isaiah 41, we were the ones who cut him off from the land of the living. And so we want to invite, we want to be ones who are inviting him back. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right. The scroll represents the title deed of the earth. Okay, go down to um, verse 5. One of the 24 elders speaks up. He says, there is a man. Now this is paraphrased. He's a Jewish man from the tribe of Judah. He's the Jewish lion. He has prevailed over death, over mm -hmm. Satan. He has paid the price for sin. He prevailed in all dimensions. He's worthy to open the scroll. To open the scroll means that he's going to release the judgments related to that scroll. Yeah. This is the king, Jesus, being commissioned and taking his rightful place to rule the earth. It's the action plan to bring the great harvest. Jesus is going to prepare the church in purity Jesus will walk out the plan every step of it. Listen, he's not going to start and stop and start and stop. He's Once this gets going, once these things happen, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Well, he's going to pause there for a second, and he's going to come and get us. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. It's not going to be a second either. It's going to be big. It's going to be lasting. We'll talk about the, the rapture event. Soon we'll read all the scriptures that go along with it because it's powerful. We need to know what the rapture is defined by the word of God, okay? Not by what we've thought. Okay, Jesus, um, the action plan is to bring in the great harvest. The church will be, the plan will involve judgment and the glory of God. The church will be purified and the nations will have a great harvest. This is what we're looking forward to. Jesus will cleanse the earth of all evil. Now, can I say that one thing alone is worth everything? If we can see this earth run properly like the Lord would do it, we have no clue how good it could be. 
America was a wonderful, has been a wonderful nation. And I believe that when we started, that the Lord gave such mercy to this nation, gave us such amazing documents that we got freedom and, and, and God has just blessed this nation. You, there's no other nation. Those of you that have been to the nations, you just want to kiss the ground when you get back. It's like, get me back to America. <laughs> right, my dear? I mean, even, I love Israel, love going to Israel. But man, when I get home, it's like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> American toilets, oh, glory. I, there is, I tell you, until you have been in the outback bush bush, man, you have no idea how blessed America is. We got the greatest plumbing in the world. Thank you, God. Plumbing, food, everything. Well, our food's being messed with, but you know what I mean. We're blessed. We go to the grocery store. We have food. We, yeah, we have food. We go to the grocery store and we get food. We get all kinds of food. We don't have to wait for the chicken. We don't have to wait for the chicken to be carried up, you know, for dinner. <laughs> or grow, yeah. <laughs> We can have the chicken Ooh, next year. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we bless America. Thank you, God. You know this this the scroll is also a ketubah document. Oh, that's good. The, the, the scroll wedding. is a ketubah yes. document. The wedding. And it is it is as he opens each of those seals, what he's doing is he's he's telling us, well, this is what I promised, and this is what I promised, and this is what I'm going to do. It all goes back to the covenant, and yeah. it goes back to the promise. That he made as the the groom, as, as, as the guy who's going to marry us. Amen. And when he when he makes a promise, he's serious and Amen. he's going to keep it. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. We can take that Absolutely. to the bank. All right. Jesus will walk out the plan every step of it. Yes. The plan will involve judgment and the glory of God. The church will be purified and the nations will have a great harvest. Jesus will cleanse all the earth of evil. When he is done, Satan will be in prison. Yes. The kings of the earth who do not bow will be killed. The governments of the earth will be replaced. By taking the scroll, Jesus accepts responsibility to cleanse and to rule the earth. Yes. He is the only one worthy. He, Jesus, is the head of the body, that in all things he may have a preeminence. Jesus will publicly receive the political authority over all the nations at his return. In the millennial reign after the tribulation, well, we're going to talk about the tribulation tonight, the Father will establish Jesus as king over all the nations, and all the kings will be saved and will base their governments on Scripture. You know what? When you have a worldwide government who, who belongs to God, the king of the universe, which is how it was intended at Adam and Eve, God was the one who walked in the garden with Adam and Eve, God was the one who set up government, God was the one who gave him the laws, um, and, and I believe the laws were given even then. Adam and Eve knew what sin was and what sin was not. Right and right from the very beginning, they had those laws with them. And they carried them onto the ark, Noahide laws, and they um, saw everything. And God established the Garden of Eden so that it would, um, it would be his governmental place. It would be his kingdom. It would be his kingdom rule. But we are the ones who cut him off and said no. Okay? Adam threw one man. We would go through all those scriptures. But remember, Adam threw one man, came sin into the world, and cut off Jesus, cut off God from his creation, from the, from the land of the living. All right. There's that little thing on the side there. I want us to remember that because I'm reading at page 12. And there's a little thing, a note on the side that says the principle of judgment. Now, oh, you don't have page 12. No, 11 and 13. Let's flip it on the other side. Is this, it's not on the other side? Did I? Oh, for crying out loud. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, we're at the end anyway. So then we're going to go to page 13. So you, as soon as you get to 13, we'll get to do 13 next. That the principle of judgment that God is going to have is that he will remove all that hinders love by using the least severe means. So when we go through tonight, when we go through the seals, 
Just remember that God is using the least severe means possible to reach the greatest number of people and to, at the deepest level of love. Now, it's shocking how hard these, these uh, seals are going to be, right? It is shocking. But people just don't want to change their minds, okay? Until they actually feel something many times. I think, I think that has happened in America over the last couple of years, and actually in the world, where people didn't believe these things would happen, and as they've unfolded, people are like, oh, wait a minute, you don't want the best for me. You're not saying you want the best, right? And they're waking up. We, we have had a great awakening, another great awakening. We're working on that. I think it's still happening. Many people who've always said all along, you know, government can do everything for us. All of a sudden, government is against you, right? It's like taking all your rights away. Do this, do that, and you can have a job. Wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> Did you have a question, brother? Well, I was just going to say, it's like they need things to be tangible. They need things to be tangible so that they can change their their heart will change. And it's the truth. God God actually, I love this, The God, God isn't the one who said it, but there's, but it's a scriptural principle. God offends the mind so that the heart will change. It really is true. He offends our mind. And then we go, I remember somebody asking me a long time ago, why do you celebrate that? And I went, oh, I never thought about it. So then it set me on a, sub, you know, on a study. And I went, oh, wait, what am I celebrating? So then I you know, really started studying the feasts more, asking the Lord, Lord, what are the feasts? Are they your feasts? And so it changed my mind. But I had, to, I had to be kind of like, it wasn't an offense, but it was like it, it hit my brain in that way. It, it provoked me. That's a great word. Because I wasn't upset about it, but it like made me, it, the question stuck. And can I just say, if we have unsaved loved ones, it's a great way to do things is just ask questions, ask them questions. So, I mean, one of the great questions that they ask, I even saw it on a billboard on my way home from Kansas, where, where are you going to spend eternity, you know, if you die tomorrow? Now, you don't have to be even, you don't even have to say die tomorrow, but where are you going to spend eternity? You can just say that. And sometimes that'll stick in there. You know, they might have an answer right off, but then you might go, they might start, thinking, well, wait a minute, I wasn't really sure where I was going to spend eternity, <laughs> right? Questions and that, can plant seeds. Questions plant seeds. It's, a, it's one of the greatest evangelism tools besides dreams. I love dreams. Okay, let's go to, to page 13 and turn in your Bible to Revelation 5, or excuse me, 6, because we're going to start reading the seals. All right. Now, so this, now, last week we marked our Bibles so that we would know that chapter 6 starts the first chronological section of the book of Revelation. So when we get to the chronological sections, that means that they're just moving forward. Right. And when we get to a parenthetical section, it's like parentheses. And it's like God saying, okay. Sit down a minute, John. I'm going to talk to you about everything that just happened in chapter 6. We're going to, well, we weren't, obviously that wasn't there then. But we're just going to talk about what that first, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh seal is. We're going to stop and we're going to talk about it. Same thing he did this in Genesis. This is a great God literary tool. When God created the heavens and the earth in chapter 1, then in chapter 2 he stops he goes back around and he explains some more things, okay? So it's a, God is the best writer on the planet. He was writing books before the beginning. Okay, let's read chapter 6. Actually, first, let me read just a little bit out of your notes. The first chronological section the se are the seven seals of judgment. These seals are literal. They're real. They're not symbolic. They are future. The seals are progressive. They grow in intensity. Let me go back to they are future. 
um, uh, I think we talked about this last week that there's a lot of people there, there's a teaching going out in the church in a heavy way right now that all of this happened in 70 AD but let me say to you as we go through this scripture I want everybody who believes that to read the scripture because in the scripture it says a whole bunch of things that never happened I've studied 70 AD and that whole history right through there and nothing like what God is talking about in chapter 6 has happened in on this planet yet but it will and we, and um, it, it is literal not symbolic future exactly. it, the seals are progressive they grow in intensity they are numbered and will unfold in a numbered sequential or chronological order one two three four five six seven only when the bowls of prayer are full does Jesus open the first seal. Let's go back just a little bit. And let's read that in five. Every creature in heaven and earth. Let's see. Lamb. So the lambs open the seal. Okay, let's just start at chapter six because I think it's in here. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. All right. Yes. It's uh, 5 verse 8. Oh, is it chapter 5 verse 8? says... Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down to before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song. And then it goes into that song that they sang. I just want you to know, I want to talk, we'll skip back to that for just a second, because the, the how many of you have ever heard of the harp and bowl movement of prayer, right? That's, my pickle was really big on teaching on the harp and bowl movement. Um, and because... The prayer movement, and it's not, Mike Bickle will say, it's not us. It's worldwide, right. all around the world. Right. You can go and find a house of prayer, and that is true. I have seen it with my own eyes. You can go find some of the most amazing houses of prayer all around the world. They used to keep track. I don't think they can keep track anymore because they're everywhere. I remember being, when I was young, I would think, where can I go to pray? I know that sounds just almost crazy. Where can I go to pray? Where are people praying? Where can I? But there was nowhere. And it has happened. Um, and Mike, when he talks about this whole prayer movement, he said, you know, when I, he said the same thing. When I was young, I, there was nowhere. I was a young pastor. I couldn't find anywhere to go pray with people. And he said, God gave me an assignment to begin 24-hour prayer that would not end. And so in 1999, they began prayer for 24-7 every day that did, has not ended. And now they're 20 years, 20 plus years in, 21 years in. And I was just there two weeks ago. So praise the Lord, it was wonderful as always. But they are going to do that until Jesus comes. So that's just how it is. <laughs> and we are too. We're going to join them, right? <laughs> no matter where we are. All right. And let me also say, the Lord had told him that enjoyable prayer was coming back. Oh, now, good. I remember when in, prayer was not all that enjoyable. <laughs> it was work. You'd go to a prayer meeting and you'd go, oh, you want to fall asleep? I mean, the first thing you wanted to do was fall asleep. It was horrible. And, it, and we just didn't have a good method. And I just praise God for people like Mike, Mike Bickle and those people down in, in Kansas City who have in, really invested in this and said, let's have enjoyable prayer. And it's fun. You go in that room. One year I was there and um, there was a football player and he was probably from the Kansas City Chiefs. He was a big guy. And, um, and there's a lot of people. I've, I've been to the house of prayer when there, you couldn't find a seat. You couldn't find a parking place, let alone a seat. And so you just stood up and pray but I remember one year we were having just an incredible prayer meeting and I look up and there's this guy with long dreadlocks he was a big old football player and he was dancing back and forth up and down 
pile. And I tell you what, that place just became electric. It is so much fun to pray with other people who are like in it. And he did that for two hours and sweat, I mean, just sweat was dripping off. It was fun to watch his hair flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a good workout, but really in, in the prayer room. So we can, we just thank God for enjoyable prayer. And, um, you know, I, it's not hardly any time at all now that I feel like we haven't accomplished something when we've had prayer. Um, here, even today, we started out early praying and at the other end and the other, and we just kept moving. And then finally I said, let's just start praying in here. And I just feel like God, we, we accomplish whatever God called us to, yes. and we believe that yes. it's going to happen. Right. So we may not see it happen with our own eyes, no. but we know, we, know we trust the Lord and we trust His Word. Amen. Okay, now, Amen. oh my goodness. So when the bowls are full, Jesus will open the first seal. So we want to work to help open the, or fill up those bowls, right? Yes. Okay, so let's start at chapter 6, the first seal. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse who sat on it, and it was given a bow, bow and a crown given to him, and went out conquering and to conquer. So this first seal is a white horse. I actually found a white, white horse. All right, sorry. <laughs> so... That first horse is white, but we're going to see that it doesn't have any of the characteristics of Jesus, okay? So we know it's not Jesus. Uh, the, uh, this first one uh, will speak of the Antichrist being released, and he will look like he is righteous and truthful. But he will be the ultimate counterfeit of truth and righteousness. Um, when he is released, he's going to, in other words, he's going to look like he's white you know what that that crown or that horse that jesus rides in on when we read that it's different than this one that that horse is amazing so we look forward to that day but we will know that the first horse when it was released and remember what's the name for the antichrist what's his actual name in the scripture the beast, the beast right he's called that 36 times so every time we see the beast we're going to know we're talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is our vernacular. Our, our, we know what we're talking about when we say that. That the Word of God says the beast. Um, he will look like he's righteous and truthful, but he will be the ultimate counterfeit. The arrowless bow speaks of the bloodless victories using deceptive diplomacy. One of the clearest examples in modern history is Adolf Hitler, who gained control of a number of nations without firing a shot. Can I say that Iraq just changed hands without firing a shot? Can you know? I I just want us to pay attention because these things are happening. Or not Iraq, Afghanistan. It is happening again without firing a shot. Boom! They took the whole nation. Okay. And took all our stuff. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. So one of the clear. Let's see. With. The Antichrist will wear a crown as a symbol of his political authority. Let's look back at Revelation 13 and let's read what that crown looks like. Revelation 13, 1 and 2. Then I saw on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea having seven heads and a ten horns and on his head ten crowns and on his heads a blasphemous name. All right, and then let's look at verse 7. His, okay, uh, his name, oh boy. Let's start at 6. Then he opened his mouth to bla blaspheme against God, to blaspheme his name. I want you to, you can underline that in your body or Bible if you want to. There's, there's three things here he's going to blaspheme. His name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. When I was at uh, International House of Prayer, Mike preached that night on what's happening now, but also what is going to happen. And he said, I want you to remember that we have not heard 
the greatest blasphemy against God yet. It's to come. It is to come. I remember as a child, I remember the first time I heard Jesus' name be used as a curse word. Jesus, somebody said, it was, it was four, I was in fourth grade. I was sitting on a bus. I remember right where I was at. It was the most, it was so traumatic to me. Because I was like, that's the Jesus I love. It just, I just was like, oh, it took my breath away. And I thought, who would say Jesus' name that way? And um, But the, best, the worst is yet to come. God help us. And, but we will be the ones who bless his name and honor his name. Okay? All right, back to chapter uh, 6. This, this, um, on this, the rider on this horse will receive authority and permission to act from God. Because who's in control? God, God is in control, not the, not the enemy. But it will look like the enemy is in control, and so I don't want us to be shocked. Um, let's go to Matthew 28, 18. Who would read Matthew 28? Let me get these scriptures out. And then somebody read Romans 13. Who will read? Which one do you have, Connie? Roman Matthew. Okay, she's going to put Matthew up. Who will read Revela um, Excuse me, Romans thirteen. Okay, you got Romans thirteen. Let me let Christine. Uh, this Christine. Oh, hey, you guys need to know each other. <laughs> she hasn't read yet. Thirteen one and four. Okay, go ahead, um, Connie. You want to read? Sure. Matthew twenty-eight. Uh, Eighteen. 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 Eighteen
But if somebody is bullying me to do something that I am not sure about, I'm not, I'm actually one of those Texan uh, people who get a little bit rebellious about that. I, you know, I kind of grew up that way. <laughs> it was like, just being tough with my dad again, I'm like, well, I got came by that naturally. Because <laughs> he's like, who told you to give me that vitamin? And I'm like, your doctor. <laughs> Shocking. But anyway, if you are being bullied, ask questions. Ask them, well, I want to see the paperwork that this is perfectly safe for me. Will you show me the studies that they do? Because they're not doing studies. <laughs> there isn't any studies. They don't want to know. Will you show me the records that this is perfectly safe for, for me to take? So ask questions. And I've heard, I've heard wisdom, and I believe this is wisdom. Don't just out and out say, no, I'm not taking it because then you'll get bullied. But if you'll just begin to ask questions, well, I would like to see the studies. I would like to see all of the ingredients in the vaccine. Because now there are, it used to be there, were one, there was one patented ingredient, and now there's something like seven. So it's growing in numbers in what they're putting in the vaccine and there's other things that are happening. So I'm just saying, ask questions, because you have the right. And um, and be careful, just pray, ask the Lord what you should do. Okay, so those are some questions you should ask, but there's more, there's really good ones. Did anybody else have a thought? That's just a good question. Did you say respect Yeah, yeah, so we want to respect a godly authority, right? For sure, even there it says in the scripture, it says, um, the government is supposed to be a terror to those who do evil, not a terror to those who do good. But remember what it also says in the last days, um, good will be evil, evil will be called good, and we're seeing that. Um, I remember seeing on CNN, the post, um, divided, we stand. I was like, hold on. <laughs> That so doesn't even compute in my head. <laughs> Divided, we stand. United, we fall. So what's your thought process? What's your end game on this? Because that doesn't make sense. Now, we talked a whole lot in here about propaganda. I have a handout if you need that um, deal on propaganda because that's what's happening. Just like yeah. it was in the 1920s. Yes. I can't take the vaccine because I have CS. <laughs> what's what is CS? Common sense. Yes, a good dose of common sense you have, my dear. <laughs> we told his aunt and shut her up. <laughs> well, why haven't you? Well, honey, I have CS. C oh. <laughs> she didn't even ask what CS Some was. <laughs> That's good. And we just changed the subject. Good. Down the road. Good for you. That was a good answer, my dear. Good answer. I have a granddaughter that if they put any of it in, if they gave her any vaccine, she would die immediately, the doctors have already said. So it's, we do have a lot of common sense. God-given common sense. God help us. And um, we don't know what's happened. Does anybody else have a question? You good? No. All right. Okay. May I ask Oh, yes. Is it like the blood <laughs> I've been, I was vaccinated as a child. I'm well, not sure yeah. what this shot is. But, no, but I, I do mean, have the blood of Jesus, yeah. which is my, you're exactly my trust right. Is in that. that my trust, in, and I told you, when I got sick, that's exactly what I did. I so Jesus. if they ask me, are you vaccinated? I'm not lying. I don't, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. I will operate under that. Okay. I don't think God can do that. No, I don't either. But I'm not giving all the details. Exactly. We only we only give what details we need to give, and if they don't ask, we don't tell. Right? That's worked for them for a long time. And the other thing is, my body, my choice. Doesn't that work? Oh my goodness! Look at that! Like, yeah, forbidding that for evil. That's right. That's their. They turned it against themselves on this. Okay. Excellent. Okay. God uses evil leaders. Um, and here's some examples from scripture. Nebuchadnezzar, God used Nebuchadnezzar and Sennacherib, he, but because he has all authority. He will remember the cycle of the judges where, um, uh, okay, the, the Israel would be at peace. 
and they would have a good judge, and the judge would do good in the land. And then Israel would begin to fall into sin. And then they would cry out, and God would give them, um, he would cry out, and then there would be another nation that would come against them and, and bring judgment on their land. And then they would repent. They would cry out and say, God, help us. And then God would help them, and then they would come back in, and they would have this whole other cycle, start over and over again and with judgment. And so God used Sennacherib. God used many of the kings. God used um, Nebuchadnezzar to deal with the whole uh, of Israel so that they would come back to the Lord. God used Gideon. Remember Gideon. God used him mightily to bring Israel back to God. All right. And in this case, God will use a very wicked ruler who is under his hand, right? He can't do more than God allows him to do. But we need to remember that he's not going to do it to us. He's going to do it to those who are evil. That's who he is bringing right. the, the destruction upon. And to us, we want to be praying, God, your will be done, and we want to see salvation happen. So, Because many people, even after the first seal, will come to Jesus, I believe. Okay. The first... <laughs> okay, the second seal. Red horse. Let's read that one real quick. Who, who's there? I just skipped mine. Heather, are you right there at 6? Or you can read it on Revelation. The second seal. Okay, go right ahead, sister. Verse 4. Verse 3. Verse 3. Yeah, 3 and 4. 6, 3. Revelation 6, 3 and 4. Oh, Revelation 6, 3. Yeah, you're right. given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Alright, so now we have two horses. <laughs> Here's the red horse. The red horse. <laughs> and if you go to Murdoch's and buy ivermectin for the horses, <laughs> take a pea-sized amount, and it will help you a lot. There's a big nasty sign now at the, at the that I'm sure they had to put up. But we've taken ivermectin for decades, for I don't know, almost a hundred years. Ivermectin is safe. We took it on the mission field to it kills malaria. You just take on the, a on the pea size. website. Yeah. In 2000, in 2019. On the CDC website in 2019, they list the guidelines for what you have to do when refugees come into our country. Yeah. Ivermectin is listed okay. in every one of the groups, African groups, Middle Eastern groups. It says Ivermectin, 200 milligrams twice a day for four days. I mean, it's right there. It's still on their website. Right. They can't get their lies straight. <laughs> they can't get their lies straight. So just take a pea size amount. It, okay. it tastes kind of funny and it's kind of gummy but the horses love it and you will too if it saves your life okay <laughs> get the apple flavor okay <laughs> second seal all right so in your notes bottom of page 13 uh, the red horse is bloodshed and world war this horse this uh, ruler will take peace from the earth uh, here's what 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 says. For when they, the nations of the earth say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. The Antichrist will make a peace treaty with many nations for seven years, and then break it. And here's what Daniel 9 says. He, the Antichrist, top of page 14, shall confirm a covenant, peace treaty, treaty with many for one week, which is seven years, but in the middle, the, we're in the middle of the seven years, the three at three and a half years of the week, seven years, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abominations shall be the one who makes desolate. Now that again is from Daniel 9, 27. We'll read more about this. Let's keep going. Remember, we are using Daniel as a key to understand this passage. Daniel 9 speaks clearly about a week of seven years. 
This treaty will be with Israel and with other nations surrounding Israel. So the Arab nations that surround Israel will be involved in this. Okay, and then the third seal is going to be opened. All right, who would like to read the third seal? That is verse 5, chapter 6, verse 5, through, uh, let's see, all the way down to the end of that section, segment, whatever it is. No one, eight, okay. Oh, no. six. Six. Is it six? Okay. Okay. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see that the hurt that you will not hurt the oil and the wine. So we did the study that the denarius is about a day's wages. So let's say you make two hundred dollars a day, or one hundred dollars a day, or whatever it is that you make for one day and your wages, and that will be the cost for one day's food. Now, if you have to pay, let's say, $200 for bread and uh, whatever you can get, whatever else you can get for $200, think about it. Think about it. All right. But we're getting there. We are getting there. Our, everything's going up right now. I don't know if you're watching what they're doing to our food supply. I was just talking to somebody who was talking about the the ports that are jammed up. They still are not unloading. It's 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 like an intent. It is an intentional thing. They're causing shortages of everything. Uh, my brother Jonathan I Christie works at IMAX Beds. He said they have blocked our shipment. It's at the port. They've offloaded it. They will not. I it, it almost happened to me. Um, my books. I had here. I am the one you love. I had uh, 1,500. Co no, 2,000 copies of that book. So it's a lot of money. Ten thousand dollars worth of books. And I. It was. I started to have to pr really pray <laughs> that they would get here because I thought, is it going to happen or not? And so we know. Be ready. That's all I'm saying, okay? We aren't going to be in fear, no. but we're going to be ready. You know, let's buy extra peanut butter, whatever it is that we can store up. Rice and beans, that's good. Um, there's a lot of things we can store up and we can be ready. God will help you. But what else does God do? God right. multiplies. <laughs> so you have this little much. You fix it and you pray over it, and guess what? It will feed the multitude. So we praise the Lord that he is going to supply all of our needs. We will not operate in fear. Um, I'm going to tell the Africa story because when we were in Africa, it was probably the most blatant thing I'd ever seen on multiplication. So we would get, uh, we had all these kids coming to us. We were in Sierra Leone, Africa, the bush bush, the way back. You don't go to the grocery store. There is no grocery store. You, they would, we brought popcorn, and the ladies would sit in the town square. They would pop popcorn over a big metal uh, bowl, a cooking pot, and it was a lot of fun. The kids were excited about it whenever they saw it, and they popped the best popcorn, and they would make up little bags of popcorn and tie them shut, and then they would make up bags of juice uh, to give to the kids and then they would make up if they had something else they would give that too but that's usually how it was popcorn and juice well um, we would go into a place and we'd say to the pat we'd ask the pastor how many do you think will be here tonight and they would give us a number and we would say okay we're going to double our number because usually that's what happened they'd say well we can get 60 kids and but we'll and we'd say, thank you, you know, we'll work for 60, we'll plan for 60, we'll plan for 120. That's what we would do. So they would have 120 plus bags of popcorn. We would have 300 kids show up. 
And you would look at the popcorn and you would look at the kids and you would thank God I know that you are not going to short Amen. one of those kids. Amen. This is not a problem for you. Thank you. Lord. So we would get done. We would get to the place where we would be pulling out that big thing of popcorn. And I'd think, well, here we go. And what happened was, is I told my Francine, who cooks the popcorn, I told her the story. I said, I said, here's the story. God will multiply the food. And she just began yes. to, yes. She, every time those ladies, ladies would be out there cooking, she, they'd be praying. Lord, yes. we know you're going to multiply this. Yes. And so those kids would run through those lines. Then you'd have kids come in off the street because they wanted popcorn because the other kids were coming out with popcorn. And so we yeah. we know we gave and gave and gave till the last child would grab the last bag of popcorn. And it was shocking. Sometimes we had enough left for the the pastors, they were always very grateful. <laughs> and the pastors would sit there and eat popcorn too while we then taught them how to do fire camp. It was always shocking to me, but not. I knew it would happen, but we would. when you see 300 kids, you're like, oh, Thank you. Jesus, these bags are tight shut. We can't do anything about this. We can't like open up and, you know, split them up. There wasn't anything we could do. But God multiplied bags of popcorn. Because guess what? He loves children. <laughs> he loves to do so much more abundant things than, than you can ask or think. I remember being in India. We were giving, we were in the gyp, with the gypsies, and we were handing out these little wooden cars that the there's these group of men here that make these little wooden cars. They're just amazing. And so I almost started a, a riot. But we learn, I learned at that point, you know, you give it to the pastor. <laughs> but we had enough every single, and I would go back to my suitcase, and I would think, well, God, what are we going to do tomorrow, you know? <laughs> and I would find cars. I kid you not, it was shocking. I had enough for every place we went. It was stunning. Those little wooden cars are clear across the land of India. Praise God. And South Africa, I've taken Praise them to Africa. I've taken them all Praise over the place, God. and I'm just shocked every time. But I'm not, because I know this is the God who loves kids. And when we bring things from America, they're like, "We love God. We're going to serve this God." Amen. And we got cars <laughs> and popcorn. <laughs> all right. So remember that. Expect that. Expect that. When we are like worried, no. Lord, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Remember this. Amen. Because God will multiply everything you have. Remember the widow. This is scriptural. Remember oh, Elijah's oh. widow. You know, oil. had a little bit of oil, oh. a little bit of flour, and she made bread, sourdough bread okay. every day. It was there. And it was there day. every day. Oh. And she had enough until the whole famine was over. Yes. And are we going to yes. see those kinds of miracles? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. we yes. are. Yes. Ah, we're going to see more things. Our shoes don't need to wear out. Our clothing. Amen. Glory. Amen. This is the God of abundance. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we have never seen, none of us have been begging bread, right? Because the Lord has been faithful to us. <laughs> my dad, we, I, I might have told you this last week, but my dad is losing his memory. And so he sat, cause my, my brother and I, Mike and I down, and he said, <laughs> well, he started to cry. And so I'm thinking, oh boy, either we're in trouble or he's really upset about, you know, something. Anyway, <laughs> he started to cry. And then he said, kids, God has been so faithful to me. And he just began to expound on the faithfulness of God. Now, he only got a couple of sentences in until he totally forgotten. We went to Canada on a dream. <laughs> it was a whole no, no other ballgame. But I, we, Mike and I both knew that it's true. That for his whole life, 81 years, God has been absolutely faithful. Is Can we all say amen? amen. The Lord has been faithful to us. Oh, he has been faithful. I was thinking today. I went. We, when we went to India, we had a, um, a certain amount of money, but we took five people. It's so expensive. We were there for seven weeks. 
<laughs> it's cheap once you get there, but it's expensive to get there. And so we, <laughs> we get there, we do everything. We come home after almost eight weeks. I come home and I'm sitting in church one night and the Lord just whispers, so did you check out the bank account? Because I kept thinking, oh, I just pray we can keep spending money because <laughs> I don't know what's in the bank account. And here I'm, here I'm back for maybe two weeks, three weeks. And he says, did you check out the bank account? And I, I just went, oh my God, your faithfulness is way beyond me. To the point, I remember coming back from Sierra Leone. I was in the airport. I look in my wallet, and I know how much money I have. But to exit the country, I have to give the guy or the lady a $100 bribe. <laughs> I've got $84 cash. That's all I've got. And I know it in my head. I'm like, oh, dear God, that's it. So I said, I told the lady, I said, ma'am, I really appreciate this, but I know I have $84. And I said, here, I'll let you hold my purse while I count all my money. This is all the cash I have. And she said, no, you have to have $100. And I said, what do I do? And she said, the guard will take you out to the ATM machine. And I said, well, okay. <laughs> so I didn't have a choice. I go out to the ATM machine. Now I had already gone through this. I'd already tried the ATM machines. They only took MasterCard across that entire nation. Wow. Only. There were no Visa, no American Express, nothing else. Only MasterCard. <laughs> so here I am in an airport. I've already been through TSA. This guard is standing there watching me. I'm like sticking my card in. I'm like, God, help. <laughs> And finally, I just said, I don't know what to do. That's, I've got $84, and I'm happy to give it to you. <laughs> Whatever, I just gotta get on that plane. So I go, we go back in, we're talking to the lady at the uh, passport place, and I, and, and I said, let me go through my purse one more time. <laughs> <laughs> His faithfulness. <laughs> there was another $20 bill there. <laughs> what do you do? I'm like, here, am I on that plane? And she said, yes, stamp my book, and here I go. I just couldn't believe it. Because what, would it, what it would have been, and I know it's, it's hard to imagine this in America, but what it would have been is, okay, you're out of the airport, you have to go find a hotel, I'd been brought by the missionaries to the place I was. Freetown is not a place you want to be if you're alone, a woman on top of that. Here I am at the airport going, oh dear God, what am I going to do? I would have had to find an airport, I would have had to find everything I needed, and, it, it, and then I would have had to find a government agency. She said, you're going to have to go to the government agency to help you get back through this airport, and then, then to get another ticket to get home. It would have been a disaster. But there was another twin. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Listen, my friends. This is what we have to look forward to. The faithfulness and the miracle power of the one true God. When everyone else is going, I don't have another thing in my house to eat. We're going to be saying, well, come on over. I don't have much, but we're going to eat it all. And we're going to get full. <laughs> right? <laughs> thank you, God. You are so good. I can't say thank you enough. I cannot say thank you enough for the faithfulness of the one true God. You know, and you see everything. I love, you know, you just think about Nebuchadnezzar and, and that statue he was making everybody bow down to. And you think about those Hebrew children standing there saying, you know, our God can save us and we know he can. But if he doesn't, I will not bow. And that's how I feel about so much that's happening right now. It's like, I know he can save me. But if he doesn't, I'm not going to bow down to no giant project. 
I'm not going to bow down to no mandate that image. is no not doctor. no image, no no bully that wants to tell me I have to do these things in order to live or to work. I'm just not going to because I serve this Jesus who's proved himself to me. I know who he is and I know who I am because yes. he's proved himself. He is, is he the best? We should serve the best, God. The best. We're so blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. Forgive us, Lord, when we don't trust you. Forgive us, Lord, when we shirk back and we we are at fear in our hearts. Father, forgive us, but Lord, help our unbelief. We know you can help our unbelief. We know we all have stories that are to come that we're going to say, look what the Lord did. I just went and dug up a bag full of potatoes out of my backyard and I didn't even plant them. Glory to God. We just thank you right now for what you're going to do in advance. You know, I do have plants coming up in my yard that I didn't plant. I have a marigold coming up and a snapdragon. And I'm like, where did those come from? And I'm just thinking, glory to God. You know, you can do that with plants. You can do that with potatoes. You can do that with carrots. You can do it with whatever I need. And I give you glory right now. And I say yes and amen. And Lord, if I don't have food, then I need to fast a bit. And I'll do that too. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We give you glory and praise. Thank you, God. All right. Let's go. Fourth seal. Fourth seal. Now, at the third seal, the third seal in page 14, kind of third way down, it says, third seal, black horse, famine and economic crisis. It's represented by the pair of scales, the greatest economic pressure, and the most severe famine in history. The denarius is the equivalent of a day's wage, or a day's work. And that's what it will cost to live every day. <coughs> We will spend time on the mark of the beast, but can I say it's never okay to take a mark in order to feed your family? Because I know that many people will say, I've got to take that mark so I can feed. It, we're, do you see the scenario that we're dealing with right now? You have to take a shot in order to work so you can feed your family. Are you getting the picture? We're getting conditioned, exactly. We're getting desensitized to doing, let's do what they tell us to do. So I can, if I just do what they tell me to do, I'll be okay. Listen, that doesn't work. Nazi Germany is our example. It never works. They will take more, they will take more, they will take more. Right, Nadine? Because she came out of it. They will take your house, your car, everything. 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 Yeah. And your neighbors will turn you in. Your neighbors will turn you in so that they can get your stuff. Your family will turn you in. Bible, the Bible tells us this is going to happen. So, are we going to be fearful? Are we no. going to be afraid? No. We have to trust this one we love. And we need to do it ahead of time. We have we to practice to now. This is our time now. of practice. That's right. It really is. That's right. And we're practicing in the best nation on the planet. Amen. So many nations are suffering so much worse than we are right now. If the day, if you saw the death toll from people dying from famine right now, you would be shocked. You would be shocked. And the persecution, that's exactly right. All right, let's read the fourth seal. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it with, was Death, and Hades followed with him. And the power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Boy, I want to just read that again. A pale horse, it's, this is similar. It says in the passion mode. Yeah, tell us what it says. It says in the passion mode. Oh, green. green it's a pale, pale green. 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 P
Um, you're exactly right. I want you to notice it's white, red, black, and green. You're exactly right. I want you to look at the Muslim country flags. And what is it that white, they're pushing in our red, country? Red, green deal. Black, green, green deal. deal. Yeah, and 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 green. You're exactly right. Um, they they say it a lot of times like puke green, puke <laughs> throw up. He even looks kind of skinny because by then we're in famine. <laughs> Poor little guy. We're sorry. Uh, it's the fourth seal. Yeah, even Coca-Cola was using that on their, their Coca-Cola bottles were red, black, green, or uh, pay, what was it? White, white, red, black, and green. But if you go through, you just see this all over the place. Now you'll start seeing it. Look at advertisements. You'll kind of see who's in cahoots, okay? Remember, we're going to talk about the synchronistic systems. We'll talk about all of those systems in the world that are, in, that are all involved in the Babylonian system. Yeah. And when any one of those, when you see those colors, just begin to think Babylonian system and Babylon is coming down. One day, Babylon will fall, but it is to come. It hasn't happened yet. One day. In one day, it will fall. So, you know what? It's not worth it to get involved in it. Because once you get out of it and stay out of it, I'm changing all my money from a wicked bank to a bank that doesn't support Planned Parenthood. Okay, I can do the same thing with my money elsewhere. I can say I am not going to buy. Somebody really convicted my heart because we buy from Amazon, and the the guy on the radio goes, "So, you're you're buying from Amazon that wicked, death supporting company because you don't want to pay shipping. What is your what is the cost you're really dealing with here?" Boy, it convicted my heart right there. So now I find out who's selling it. I go right to their <laughs> website. I go straight to the seller, straight to the one who's producing things. If I can, if I can, okay? I, it's not always possible right now. They change things. They're shutting, Myers Hardware's closing. Yes. Oh, my oh my God. Our whole town is grieving. I don't know how, I've been here 36 years. We, or 33 years. We have shopped every time we can. We need something. We go there first, and then we go to the others if we have to. But the whole town, Golden, is just grieving. But what does that do? That pushes us into a different market, an Amazon or whatever. God help us. Okay. Now, let's stick with the pale, the pale horse. I want to quit because I want to give you guys a minute for questions. <clears throat> Fourth seal, death and disease to one quarter of the world. Now, the pale horse or pale green or ashen, the color of death or decay of a corpse or black and blue as if made so by bruising. That's the meaning of the colors that are on that horse. <clears throat> Here's what Ezekiel says. How much more it will be when I send my four severe judgments on Jerusalem, the sword and famine, and even wild beasts and pestilence to cut off man and beast from it. God's judgments against the wicked results from God taking his restraining hand off of evil men and allowing them to sin in an unrestrained way against one another. The Antichrist will act violently against the nations. Let's, let's go ahead and read the fifth, sixth, and seventh seals. Now, remember the fifth one is, pr is prayer movement. So who will read um, Revelation 6, 9 through 11? I will. And we're almost getting close to 9, 11. So I just, let's just remember that yeah. little number. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? 
Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. All right, so this one is not necessarily raining down on evil men, but we're seeing what's going on in the prayer meet movement. I just think it's interesting that this seal, number five, which number five is grace. So we have the grace to be crying out to the Lord at this time. It says they cried. The intensity of the prayer ministry in heaven at this time gives us insight into the intensity of the prayer ministry on earth. How long? The most reported recorded prayer in history. Here is a prayer for justice on the Antichrist's cruelty, vindication of God's reputation, and deliverance of his people. This is not a cry for personal vengeance, but that God would remove reprobates who are the ones who shake their fist against God. They're not the ones sitting on the fence going, oh, I deserve Jesus, but, you know, I just don't want to right now. That's not them. It's the ones who are shaking their fist. Those are the reprobates. All right. Uh, and remove reprobates who oppress his people and hate God's kingdom. All right. So the prayer movement is a massive thing, and it is happening now. And like we talked about, it's going to continue to happen until Jesus returns. Sixth seal. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon. We're getting close to Halloween, so just think about, you know, what they always show you is hair looking black um, around this time. Just think of that. And the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, and the fig tree drops its figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky recorded as a, receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains of the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. Who is able to stand? Did they repent? No. What are the four, what are the four sins that are going to be so increased? What are the four sins? Murder. That's already happening now. Murder. What else? Fornication. Foreign is sexual immorality. To the fullest extent. Are they going to repent? No. 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 What we'll else? Do it more. Sorcery. Sorcery. Oh, the occult is going to be at a high, such a high level. In fact, um, when I was in Kansas City, Mike Bickle said, you will be shocked when you know how high level the occult worship is and how widespread it is on the whole earth. Yep. And I believe that. I do too. Occult, because Halloween has become the number one holiday. holiday and I, I told the Thursday class, I know, but I've had, I don't know, three or four people. A lady, a girl said it to me today. She goes, I can't wait till Halloween. I'm like, wait, wait, this is September. This is the first of September. Why are you so excited about it? And I was like, what's that about? So we had a good conversation, but it's like, why is that the number one? You don't get gifts, right? You get candy. <laughs> what? babies is being sacrificed Innocent to, Satan, blood of, to Satan. That's right. On yeah. that night. And that is what people are celebrating. Right. My dears. That's right. It's wicked. I saw again this Our week people. where they, in New York City, whichever direction New York is, they uh, signed that bill that they could kill those babies after they're born. After they're born. And the pastors surrounded the governor and clapped and laughed at him signing that law. It is absolutely. It's twisted demonic. Twisted demonic, oh. exactly. It was but in Texas, this week, yes, no, they passed a yes, law, a righteous law, that once a heartbeat is heard, you cannot Praise perform an abortion. We 
in New York? Oh, in Texas. They are still fighting it, but the courts gave them uh, some gave standing. Them some space. Yeah, gave them some space on it. Praise God. So we just agree that that's going to continue in Jesus' name. Yes. Glory to God. Righteous men, this is the time, righteous men and women, we've got to stand, stand. up like never before. Speak. Speak up. Okay. Prayer movement, six seal. Cosmic disturbances, natural, natural atmospheric cosmic crises are happening with this. When this seal is open, God's specific answer to the prayer martyrs in heaven is answered. The Greek word for stars is asters. Now, I mean, I want you to think about this for a second. If all the stars fall from heaven, most stars are bigger than the planet Earth. If one star hit us, we would be smashed to blitherings. That's not going to happen. Um, but what that does mean is we are going to see cosmic things in the heavenlies, and it's going to be shocking. We are going to watch things happen, and we're going to say, this is the hand of God. Nobody can do this but the hand of God, right? That's right. Okay, first, now then we're going to stop at this, uh, this part right here, what we just read, and then God is going to go back, and he's going to talk about what has just happened in the uh, the seals and we stop you're going to see a pattern again here because we're going to stop at number six every time on the sixth seal the sixth trumpet and the sixth bowl you stop right there this like god puts on the brakes for just a minute and then he says let me talk about this to you and then he's going to explain so next week we're going to talk about this or not next week two weeks in two weeks we'll talk about this Next week, we'll, we're going to have an encouraging night with Jonathan and Sam, Sammy Amen. at 5.30. starts at 5.30. Um, but I want you, if you want to read, read chapter 7 and 8 um, while, we're, you know, while we're waiting. But also, I want you to see how important the, um, Israel and Israel's people are to God because he put in there specifically, Israel is involved in this time. Um, if you believe the preterist, the preterists say that Israel is not important anymore and the church has replaced Israel. That is not true. Glory to God. Amen. Because they still have things to accomplish. Israel, God right. has his hand on Israel. We bless her right now. We bless Israel. Lord, we bless all of the sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Ishmael. We just bless them right now. We pray right now that many sons will come to glory through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. We call Israel to her Messiah. We call Ishmael's, the children of Ishmael, to, to their Messiah in Jesus' name. And we thank you even tonight that they will see the man in white. We give you glory that they are seeing Jesus. They are coming to Jesus in droves. We pray right now, Lord, for the people in Afghanistan that you will keep your hand upon those who are running, those who are hiding, those who are escaping the, the, bar, the barbarian treatment, and those who are able to, um, to just hunker down. We just bless all of them, however they're doing it. We bless those Christians. We thank you, Lord, that they are not going to share, the, stop sharing the gospel, that the gospel will run quickly, like we just read in, in Psalm 40, 147, I think it was, or 48. And we thank you, God, that your hand is on the move, and your hand will not stop moving. Through the, God, we just pray right now for the northern nations of Africa. We call you to Jesus right now. We say, Libya, come to Jesus. Sierra Leone, come to Jesus. We call you in. All of those, Egypt, we call you to Jesus now in Jesus' name. We, Algeria, Nigeria, Uganda, we call you. Kenya, all of these nations, we call you in. We say, come to Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somalia, yes, Ethiopia. We call you in. We say, come to Jesus now. French Ghana. Glory to God. The Congo. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for your people all across the nations. We know that you are you are speaking to them. We call them in in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If you have your offering, just lift it up before the Lord. Let's just lift it up. We're going to give an offering, a large offering to the persecuted believers as Acts 8 instructs us. They sent a good... We, this is so amazing, God's timing. We sent two offerings to Jerusalem, to Israel, 
just before this, and now we're sending the, an offering, a good offering to the sons of Ishmael. It just shocks me how the Lord does things. How could you plan that? Praise God. It's impossible. And so, Father, we just lift up our offering before you, and we say, Father, thank you that, Lord, this, this offering represents souls. We know our dollars represent souls, and we ask you, Lord, to take our offering and, and um, send the gospel. Send the gospel quickly across the nations in Jesus' name. We ask, Father, as we give, that, Lord, that you will get it into the right hands at the right time so that those who are being persecuted will have some relief in Jesus' name. We ask and we thank you, Father, in advance. Father, we thank you. We give you glory because we know when we give, Lord, you do multiply abundantly. We cannot outgive what you do to us. So we thank you and give you all glory in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. I just want to wait on the Lord just a little bit. We just wait on you, Lord. We can start that around, my sisters. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, when I woke up this morning or sometime today, I can't remember what it was, but I saw us lay our hands on ourselves. So let's lay our hands on ourselves wherever. If you have something wrong, lay your hand there if you want to, or just lay your hand on your heart or your head. Lord, I want to, oh, I'm going to lay my hands on my eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the healing power and for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the word of God that was read here tonight. And Father, you showed me that when we read the Word of God, it goes down through our skin. It goes down through our bone. It goes down through our blood and into our blood vessels. We just thank you right now, Lord, that you are healing our bodies. You are healing our organs. You're healing our blood. You're healing our muscles and tendons and bones. Father, we thank you that you're bringing health to our skin. We thank you, Father, that we are going to be younger tomorrow than we were today. We thank you, God for supernatural healing in Jesus' name. And we give you glory and praise and honor. Thank you that the word of God is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. We give you glory that it divides asunder every lie that we've listened to. And we thank you that you're healing us even from the lies that we've listened to. You're healing us now. Lord, when you bring it up in a dream, help us to deal with it immediately. Lord, help us to hear you and not to deny your voice in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heal our bodies. Heal our minds. Heal our will, our emotions, our soul. Speak to our soul, Lord. Convert our soul completely through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, like Psalm 19 commands. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory. We give you all glory and praise. I just pray your blessings over these, your people. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bring his abundance and his generous Holy Spirit to your house. May you have laughter in your house. Oh, may you have joy. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. May you lift your countenance. And may his shalom be upon your home in Jesus' name. We just thank you, God, right now for the abundance in our homes. Thank you, Lord. Give us wisdom for these days. Give us wisdom for these days. We ask God. We need wisdom like never before. Lord, you're the one who said that these days are going to be unlike any others. So, Lord, right now we ask for wisdom. I need your wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 